In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather to be nourished by Jesus, we pray that he continues to strengthen us, especially in our efforts to bring comfort to one another and to the world. preparing ourselves for these sacred mysteries, we call to mind the mercy of Jesus. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, our hope, and our charity. Make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word that he might present to himself the church in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed, Blessed are, are those, those who, who fear, fear the Lord. Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed, Blessed are, those are those who fear the Lord. Behold, 
Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Sion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, what is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in a garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. And again, he said, to what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. During the last many months, We've seen many things surprise us with regard to shortages. There were lots of things that were kind of in the news a lot, like toilet paper that we couldn't find, right? But there was another one. It was yeast. So many people started making their own bread and the yeast ran out quickly and it was really hard to get a hold of it. I myself had to cultivate my own and started making sourdough bread. Still, it's not always on the shelves, but you can start to find it. I couldn't help but think about this when I was reading the readings today, but I also thought about another thing. It's something that we will hear more prevalently in the coming days. We're approaching Advent. Advent is the beginning of another liturgical year. And one of the things that happens starting right about now in our liturgy is we start preparing for Advent in the readings because they will start talking about the end times. Together we will pray about what, what it will mean when Jesus comes again. And even as we start to go through this end of the liturgical year to begin a new year with Advent, that prayer will be concentrated on what the end will look like and how will we be prepared and it's interesting that we do that because Advent itself is also about the end times. The first two weeks of Advent pray more about what it is to prepare for Jesus' second coming by remembering how we were told to prepare for his first coming. It's only toward the end of Advent do we kind of um, switch in that gear that, to remember strongly he did come and he came in response to what the prophets foretold and how his birth reflected what we were told to wait for. But the first part of Advent and this time of year share something in common. Praying about what Jesus said he would do when he said he would come again. 
So these next weeks are much about that. Readings today are evident of it. What is the kingdom of God like, Jesus tells us. And like a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds that grows into a large bush, or that grain of yeast that can change everything. Make a loaf, a batch, leaven, given time. That being said, remember what our readings were on the weekend. So very often, our weekdays reflect what we've been talking about on Sunday. Sunday, love God with all your heart, with all your mind and your soul. The first commandment, the second, is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is our leaven, our yeast, in who we are to be as we await the kingdom. We are to be people who establish the kingdom like the yeast of love and care for one another. It's there that we would understand and so often taken out of context the reading about that we had today with the one line in the middle, wives be submissive to their husband. But St. Paul tells us, I'm speaking of Christ. I'm speaking of the role of the one who will come and then how a relationship of, of marriage reflects that leaven. Because our reading today started with, and I'll, I'll be subordinate to one another out of reverence to Christ. It speaks more about what a husband should do than what a wife should do. But the reading started with, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Put those words right after, love God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Love one another, we were told. Think of the other as if it is yourself. Because marriage reflects the love of God. Marriage reflects that unconditional love and it's unconditional love given and returned. That is the yeast that makes a difference in the world for us, and not just within our family units. But when we love as God loves us in our family units, the first place of church, and then that pours out into the world like a leaven that makes a difference. It's not just wives be subordinate to their husbands or husbands love your wives. It's much more than that. It's love your neighbor as yourself. Be subordinate to one another. Think of the other first. Think of the other as your own flesh and blood. That is the leaven that makes the difference in the kingdom. Our response psalm was, blessed are those who fear the Lord. In these days that we celebrate the ending of one year where we pray and into another year of praying, we pray about the end times and that we will be found worthy by Jesus when he comes again, by how we have built his kingdom, by how we have loved. Today is World Hospital Chaplain Day.
prayed about compassion, a particular way in which we put the other first in our life. When we suffer with them and we have compassion for the sick or the dying. At the beginning of this pandemic, we prayed so often for our emergency workers and our hospital workers. Today, we pray for chaplains that support them in their efforts in compassion. And we haven't forgotten to pray for them. I don't believe that. But to put them in focus again is to also highlight one way where we are compassionate and loving for stranger as well as our own family members. Love your neighbor as yourself, we were told. Be subordinate as we serve our Christ, we are told. And we put our lives in service of all. Lord Jesus, servant of servant, compassion to the world, form us in what it means to love. Love you and our neighbor as ourself. And then send us to be the leaven for the world. Gathered as God's household, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That the baptized may serve one another out of reverence for Christ, we pray. That Christian marriages may flourish in mutual love, we pray. That all relationships may be free of the wrinkles of control or jealousy or unfaithfulness, we pray. That the members of Christ's body may subordinate themselves to the sick and the vulnerable, we pray. For all of our hospital workers and our chaplains who lead them, in compassion, we pray. That as we celebrate the end of our liturgical year, we may concentrate on the gifts of heaven that last in building Christ's kingdom as he asks us to, to prepare, we pray. That we accept our trials in life that help us to love perfectly, we pray. That our beloved dead may be sanctified by the love of Christ, we pray. God of love, through the mystery of Christ, you cleanse us in the bath of water and the word. Join us together as members of Christ's body that we may serve each other in mutual respect and reverence and so reveal your splendor and holiness unto the endless ages of ages through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. 
It will become the bread of life. to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself when he shared in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with these gifts we offer you in sacrifice with humble and contrite hearts. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You alone are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, Walter Hurley, our Bishop Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, and all our patron saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we have the privilege to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death and resurrection brought life to the world by your holy body and blood. Free us from all our sins, from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching. Never let us be parted from you. My Jesus, we believe you are present in the most holy sacrament, loving you above all things and desiring to receive you in our souls. For those who cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into their hearts. For we all embrace you as you are already there, and we unite ourselves totally to you. Never permit us to be separated. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
communion antiphon, we will ring out our joy at your saving help and exalt in the name of our God. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, and that we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess an eternal truth through Christ our Lord. Sometimes people ask, who was in the bulletin as the Mass being offered for Dolores Smolars is the mother of the priest that was here this summer and was recovering at the same time as, as pa Father Patrick. He's the pastor in Holly, I think it's uh, Beverly Hills, Michigan. Um, Father Jim Smolars, and he had surgery this summer, so he asked a bunch of prayers be said for his mother. I, of course, prayed for her today and, and for him. At the same time, I heard um, in the last day or so, um, two or three other uh, people to pray for. One, Father Mike Connor, who is the priest in Hillman, has liver cancer and will be retiring. Leif Limbaum called me last night and he had a, a, a cancerous uh, diagnosis and they will be leaving down for Florida to treat, I think, leukemia. And uh, as well, Judy Wilson, stage four cancer. It's just been a lot of people that, you know, you read in the news about how it's not just people who are sick with COVID, but we are missing diagnosis for other things that are there. We have a lot of people to pray for. I'm sure there's more, but um, we pray for all of them. And uh, it's an important time to have compassion for the sick. And an uh, important time to, uh, to pray for all of them. As you know, when someone gets sick today, the first thing that they do is treat them just like they have COVID and their families can't see them and when they're in the hospital and all of that. So um, trying, trying to protect, it's not like they're trying to be mean, but it is a hard time to be ill. It is a hard time to be ill. So we pray in compassion for the sick and pray for all those who minister to them to try to keep them well, our doctors and nurses and uh, people running the labs and our hospital chaplains as well. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.